Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the time machine. A few weeks ago, I published a video called 13 Ways to Fill Your Sketchbook, and people really seem to dig it. So today, backed by popular demand, I've got a list of 10 more ways to fill your sketchbook. And these are guaranteed to work, no matter if you just got a brand new sketchbook and you're freaking out because you don't want to ruin it. Or maybe you're in the middle of a sketchbook and you've convinced yourself you've got a case of artist, artist block. <laughs> which isn't real by the way. Or maybe you're near the end of your book and you're just about to finish, but man, you ran out of juice. Well, friend, this video is for you. But enough farting around, let's get to it. All right, 10 more ways, here we go. The first way to fill your sketchbook with good stuff is challenge yourself. Yeah, jump in head first and take a challenge. There's the 365 day challenge, the 100 days of making comics, 100 heads challenge, draw for 30 minutes for 30 days challenge, Inktober, and on and on and on into oblivion. In 2015, I did the 365 day challenge where you draw and post something on socials every day for a year. And like all drawing challenges, it tested me. And sometimes it was a king sized pain in the ass. But doing any of these challenges will teach you a lot about discipline, practice, and sticking it out when it becomes uncomfortable. And the best part is, when it's over, you'll be a better artist. Okay, number two, still life. Wow, did you hear that? 10,000 groans echoing through the universe. All right, hold on a second. I know this sounds lame, but I'm not talking about flowers in a vase or fruit in a bowl. It could be a still life drawing of your action figures or other stuff on your bookshelf, a bicycle, art supplies, a pile of shoes, or it could be the delicious grilled cheese sandwich you had for lunch. Get creative with it, but whatever it is, set it up with a light source to make it dramatic and more interesting. Practice drawing the shadows and negative space between the objects. Drawing stuff in real life will give you a whole set of distinctions that you can't get by looking at a photo. And speaking of real life, number three is figure drawing. Probably one of the best ways to fill your sketchbook because almost everyone likes to draw people. And if you don't, cool, draw your dog or cat, turtle, lizard, snake, whatever, because they've all got figures too. Are there any classes nearby that you could attend? Can't convince a naked person to stand still long enough to draw them? No sweat. Draw the clothed figure. Clothed, clothed, clothed figure. <laughs> wow, that's hard to say. People wearing clothes. How about that? They're usually more interesting anyway. Think of all the great practice you'll get studying how clothes drape and move on the body. Okay, on to number four glue ends. Now this one covers a lot of stuff, but it's basically just anything you glue, tape, or stick into your sketchbook. Like all those thumbnails you drew on scratch paper, movie and concert ticket stubs, making memories, stickers, washi tape, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or maybe you did a sketch at work during a boring meeting. Hey, that's a drawing. It counts. Glue it in. All right, number five, landscapes. And another small chorus of groans echoes through the YouTube artist community. That's right, make landscapes great again. Now, I'm not sure what that means. I just saw it on a hat. It could be a rural scene or a big city, or maybe a seascape if you're lucky enough to live near the ocean. La-di-da for you, fancy pants. But the best way to draw landscapes is in real life, if you can. Dude, I know they seem super boring, but they're gonna help you to build better environments. And then you can build better worlds, and then you'll become a god. <laughs> what? Oh, sorry, my lawyer says I can't guarantee that. Anyway, being able to draw an interesting setting will come in mighty handy for comics, storyboards, editorial illustrations, or just a nice painting to hang in your mom's bathroom. 
Now, let me just take a short time out here to say this. The main thing to remember is your sketchbook is for you. It's there for you to practice, brainstorm, and try new things. And when you try something new, guess what? It's probably going to suck for a while, but that's okay because that's what your sketchbook is there for. It's your buddy, your pal, and your good, good friend. And besides, who cares? No one else has to see it, right? I mean, unless you make videos about your sketchbooks. Here we go. Number six, go nuts, make a mess. Now, this is a page or spread in your sketchbook dedicated to going for it loosening up, and breaking the fear of the blank page. I hear some people say that they're afraid to ruin their sketchbook. Well, newsflash, Panda Bear, there's no such thing. You can't. It's your sketchbook. It's you. But if you're still chicken after that cheesy platitude, do it anyway. But do it on purpose. Make terrible drawings with a smeary charcoal stick. Warp the pages with watercolor. Flick ink on it with a toothbrush. Wrinkle and tear the pages. So what? And hey, if you're feeling really bold, do it on the very first page of a new sketchbook. It'll help you to break through the anxious weirdness of all those blank pages right away and get you onto the good stuff way quicker. Next up, number seven, practice perspective. Ugh, yeah, I hate it too. I hate it so much. But even if you're allergic to rulers and vanishing points like I am, you should still have at least a basic grasp on the concept. Why? Why go through the torture of grids and measuring? Because it's going to help your drawings, paintings, and comics look more believable even if you draw in a cartoony style. And that way, the viewer will be attracted to your work rather than jarred by your janky, weird-looking perspective. Okay, number eight, head shapes. Draw a geometric shape and make a face out of it. Or pick people out of a crowd and draw the shape of their heads. Exaggerate it. What shape is your head? A square, triangle, circle, rectangle, trapezoid, rhombus? Or my personal favorite, a dodecahedron. I know, it sounds remedial, and you're probably thinking, what's this guy going to tell me next? Glue macaroni to the page? But trust me, or don't, but you really should, because these kinds of seemingly dumb kindergarten-style exercises will really help you make more interesting-looking characters. And of course, that's going to make all of your stuff look much, much better. All right, number nine, STPT. It's a secret acronym we made up at the animation studio I worked for a hundred years ago. Actually, that's a lie. It's not a secret. It stands for straight to pen theater, and your sketchbook is the perfect place for this exercise. It's when you draw with an ink pen or brush without doing an underdrawing with a pencil first. And it's another great way to let go of perfectionism and just go for it. Because unless you're Kim Jong-ji, you're going to make mistakes. And there they are, in pen, for life, forever. Well, I mean, I, I guess you could tear the page out if you really hated it that much. And our final way to fill your sketchbook today, number 10, drawing prompts. Can't think of anything to draw? No problem. Let a robot do it for you. Here's three websites that will generate random drawing prompts, and I'll put those links in the description below. Or you could follow along with Casey Golden's 500 prompt list, or maybe wait a couple more months and it'll be time for Inktober again. And remember, you can always come up with your own. I'm working on a list of 100 prompts right now that will be unveiled very, very soon. <laughs> I know, pretty exciting, right? Anyway, whether they're yours or someone else's, drawing prompts are always a great way to jumpstart your creative thinking, get you drawing, and most importantly for this video, fill your sketchbook with good, good stuff.
Well, there you have it, friends and neighbors. 10 more amazing ways to fill your sketchbook. And if you missed the first video in this series, 13 ways to fill your sketchbook, you could watch it right now. Where? Right here. And as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you thought this video was pretty sweet, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe, make sure you hit that notifications bell. And that way you'll never ever miss another sketchbook video right here on the time machine. See ya.